Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. This is Sister Lorianne, Minister Lorianne Toback, and this is Apostolic Worship Leader and Evangelist Jacob Toback. God bless you this morning, beloved. We're excited this morning. Uh, the name again of the ministry is Worshippers of the Living God, and the mandate from God is restoring true worship to God's people. We're going to uh, focus this morning on repentance. However, we must review a couple of things here just so that everything falls into line smoothly. Again, true worship is worship that is according to the word of God. Let every man and every devil be a liar, but let the word of God be true. Man does not live by bread alone. He lives by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. The true, 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, the true love of God is that we obey his commandments. Now, the word worship, whenever you want to find out, God has a, a, a is, isn't complicated. He has a definition for everything in the Bible. And the, the place you find this is, and you should know this, is the Nelson's Strong's Concordance. The Nelson's Strong Concordance is the recognized authority for every leader in the country. Every leader uses it, so there's not even any question. And if you will take a look, again, in the Strong's Concordance, in the Old Testament and the New, the Old Testament word for worship is shechot, it's word 7812, and I will demonstrate while Lori Ann the gives the, not only that, but gives the definition. I want you to give the definition of the word worship. Everywhere in your Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Old Testament's Hebrew, the New Testament's Greek, everywhere you see the word worship, it means bow, kneel, and prostrate. Prostrate means flat right, on the we'll ground. We'll demonstrate this for okay. everyone in case someone okay. doesn't know. This is this is kneel. This is bow. And this is prostrate. Yes, this is what a true worshiper looks like. Every man and woman in the Word of God knew what this word meant and what it looked like. And, and when you meet the living God in person, because Jesus Christ is alive, you don't need Jacob and I to tell you to fall at his feet and worship him. True. We're <laughs> setting you up in position to with receive. this ministry to receive from him. Uh, Christianity is not a college course <laughs> where, you, you, where you, you take 10... 10, 25, 30 courses within a couple of years, and, and you get a No, no, no. Christianity is a supernatural change of life where you will come face to face, nose to nose, mouth to mouth, lips to lips, eyes to eyes, body to body with the great I am, with Hallelujah. our God and Father. This is what God wants. And now is the season that it's going to happen. Hallelujah. There's a revival coming, not coming, it's it is here. already here. It it's is. Here. True worshipers are receiving what God has promised them. So uh, if we take a look at Psalms 29, it says, worship the Lord in the beauty of, of holiness. Everyone has read that a million times. Circle that word worship. If you take a look in the Strong's Concordance, that word again is bow, kneel, prostrate, and the Hebrew Bible says bow to the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So worship again consists of two things. Condition of the heart, Got to have a pure heart to see God because the holiness of God has never changed and position of the body. Condition of the heart and position of the body so you can receive. That says everyone understand that if you have any questions, just send them on the screen here in, in Horoscope and we'll answer as many questions as you have for us today. Periscope. Please, on Periscope. It's Periscope what we're doing today. Thank you, Lorian. So it's two conditions must be necessary to have true worship. Number one, the position of the body and the condition of the heart. You can't have one without the other. You can't be bowing, kneeling, and prostrating and living like a devil six days a week. You can't do it. It's not worship. Mm -hmm. It's counterfeit. 
And you can't say, oh, God understands my heart. No, God understands that he expects prompt obedience from him. And you're a frigid bride. You can't say, you know, I'm saved by grace and, you know, I don't do willful sinning and God knows my heart. I don't have to bow, kneel and prostrate. Well, Jesus talks about this in the book of Revelations, and he says, I wish you were either hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'll vomit you out. He's coming back for a passionate, passionate bride. And this is what this ministry is about. It's about passion, passion for the bride, passion for the groom, passion for Yahweh. So I'm excited for you because you're going to receive. Now, it says in the beauty of holiness, yesterday on the film we discussed the holy communion will be our key to walk in holiness on a daily basis. Uh, Lorianne, why don't you get the scriptures that you read to us yesterday on okay. chapter 6. Okay, she, she has been reading, Yahshua Jesus gives us the full revelation on this holy communion. Okay, I um, encourage you to read this as well. Uh, John chapter 6, it starts in verse 53, and he says, Then Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Now, what did the, when the disciples heard that... Uh, further what down, most, yeah. Most, um, yeah, further down, it says... Um, um, many, therefore, of his, of his disciples, in verse 60, when they heard this, they said, this is an offensive saying, who can understand it, who can bear it? And, and Jesus and him and himself, uh, that his disciples murmured it, and he said to them, does this offend you? And he says, what if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Yes, now... Um, again, Yahshua Jesus says this five times. We want you to read it. That's chapter 6, starting at verse... 53 to the end of the yeah, chapter. You There's read a lot it, more. You read it yourself. He says it five times. My flesh is genuine food. My blood is genuine drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood shall never die, shall have eternal life, and I shall raise him up at the last day. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood shall abide in me forever. But he who does not eat my flesh and drink my blood has no life in him. Now, the reason why the disciples got so offended was it sounds like cannibalism. Mm -hmm. And the question again is this. Did he truly mean this spiritually that we were going to eat his flesh and blood? Or did he just mean it as a representation? And again, God, Father answers us in the word in Corinthians where he plain, Paul speaks and gives you the answer because okay. you must know the truth on this. And you, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but start in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 23. But I'm going to go right to the part where he says, um, where he says this. In um, verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes again. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat the bread and drink of the cup unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Here you go. Verse 28. But listen let, carefully to this now. But, listen. But let a man examine himself. So he that eats of that bread and drinks of that cup. For he that eats and drinks unworthily, that means without repenting, eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Next one. Verse 30. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many are dying. Okay, re I want you to repeat that slowly. To, okay. I want everybody, please, to let this digest from the mind okay. to the heart. To the heart and the okay. spirit. Go ahead. Okay, I'm in, I'm in verse 30, 1 Corinthians 11. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many are dying. Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we, we should not be judged. Now, this is the answer. What we are taking in communion is not a representation, but spiritually, this is... The body and the blood. And this very simply put, if this was just a piece of matzah, 
Could this cause somebody, just because they didn't repent properly, to get sick and die? Mm -hmm. Of course it couldn't. And, and it won't kill you? Of course it won't. And this is grape juice. And if it was just grape juice, and I didn't repent properly, or you didn't, this wouldn't cause us to get sick and die. But because it is the body and the blood, this is holy. Now, we know in the Old Testament, the priests used to have bells around their waist. They used to, only one a year could do this. Now you're the priest, and this is what God is elevating you for. And that's why you must please receive this, because they're not teaching this in the church. But this is the word of God. This is not a personal opinion, which quoting the Bible to you. Now, again, this, what we're looking at, is this spiritual blood. Now, if this, the, the, the priest who went in, if he was not cleansed, he would die instantly in that holy of holies. Has the holiness of God changed any? No, he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God's holiness has never changed. Our culture has changed and made sin acceptable and fashionable. No, this is mm -hmm. exactly right. So when we take our communion, we must repent thoroughly. And this is what we're going to do today. We go to um, Psalms... Uh, 51. 51. And that talks about uh, King David. Uh, he repented after he killed his best friend. Search my heart, O Lord. Show me what it is about me that's offensive to you. Today, we have to make a decision. Again, you must make a decision whether you are going to renounce sin in your life. If you don't make that decision, you cannot walk with him because very clearly in Hebrews, it states that if you continue purposely to practice sin, I mean willfully because you don't want to stop it, then the blood of Yahshua Jesus has no more effect Hebrews on you. Hebrews chapter 6, it talks about that. Once it's you are born again and you, you, you keep on sinning and you don't want to stop, in Hebrews chapter 6, you are literally stomping on the blood of Jesus and the blood doesn't cover you anymore. So please, this is the word of God. This is ma a matter of life and death. And you don't hear too much preaching about this mm -hmm. because uh, I, I think that preachers don't want to offend the body, but the word of God... The truth is usually never soothing, but it will always set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today, Father, forgive me for my pride overestimating myself, my unbelief. I pray one minute and I'm complaining the next. Forgive me, Father. Unbelief, doubt, double-mindedness, cleanse my heart of unwarranted suspicions regarding your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness to me and your mercies are new each and every morning. Forgive me for haughtiness, for rudeness, for gossip, slander, tail-bearing. Forgive me. Let the blood of Yahshua wash our. Come on out. You have to do your own repentance now. This is mine. I'm just giving you an example. This is just an example. See, Amen. Jesus is our daily bread, so we repent every right, day. Just ask the Lord right now, to forgive you of your sins. Forgive me, Let him Father. show you, forgive me. I don't want to sin. I want to please you. And I want to recommit my life. Now, there is one sin that has the body of Christ in bondage. Every service we go to, there's at least 70% yeah. of the of the brothers and sisters are bound up These in the sin. These are Christians. These are Christians because church they're not people. getting set free in mm -hmm. the church because there is no glory and there's no glory because there's no true worship. But today you're going to get set free. And this sin that Satan has the body bound up is unforgiveness, bitterness, and anger towards somebody. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe it happened when you were a little child. Maybe you were sexually abused. Maybe you were physically abused. It, it was so painful to you that you almost want to just, it's like you have trouble remembering it. But no, it says, Yahshua Jesus says, I've come 
to set the captives free today. Hallelujah. Yeshua Jesus is going to set you free today of unforgiveness, bitterness, and anger and resentment. Now, you cannot go to heaven if you are bound up. Please don't let anyone tell you different. Yeshua, Jesus, out of his own mouth said, if you do not forgive those who have willfully sinned against you, your heavenly Father cannot forgive you. Please, right now you're in a position where you have no salvation. I don't care who tells you what. This is what the word of God says. Your prayers are cut off. Mm -hmm. Your worship is cut off. And Yahshua is bringing you as a bride to him right now. Yes. You're going to get set free He's going to set you free. Jesus is going to set you free right right now. now. So if you are that one, not that one, if you are the ones right now that this message is speaking to you, this is not an accident. This is the move of the Holy Spirit, what God is doing across the land. He's going to set you free right now. So what we're going to do is Lorianne is going to stand in proxy for you. I'm going to put for you, just like the centurion servant. Remember his servant was home? Yahshua Jesus is going to touch you right now. We've got to get free from this. So this is the anointing oil. What we do is put out your hands. Do you want to be set free? Yeah. Do you want to be able to have a relationship with Father and your groom, Yahshua Jesus, to be free to worship, to come into his glory, to live in the fire of his glory, to live in the fire of his love, to live in the fire of his truth, to live in his heartbeat, his passion? Are you hungry for him? Then he's going to come right now. I'm willing to forgive those who hurt me and those I have unforgiveness and anger. Put out your hands. Put out your hands. Because the oil is going on your hands right now. I'm standing in proxy for everyone watching this video. Now. Father has forgiven you of all your sins except the one that you forgot he forgave you about. And that's that we were one of the ones who put 